Eyewitness News investigation that last night revealed the Smiley Face Killers, a gang that murdered Chris Jenkins. And it may be linked to 40 other deaths across the country. We showed you the link. What are what local police and prosecutors doing with this new evidence now? That's the question. Christy Peel here with that part of the investigation. Christy? Lillian and John, two retired New York cops say they've cracked the Chris Jenkins case. But right now, local police and prosecutors have no interest in what the detectives have uncovered. You should let Grandpa take control. When Chris Jenkins' body was pulled from the Mississippi River four months after he disappeared, these two decorated NYPD detectives say it was still covered in clues. They blame local investigators for missing them. When the case was first closed and ruled an accidental drowning, Chris's dad, Steve, looked through all the police photos himself. After four months, the decomposition process is horrific. I was also forced to look at Chris's autopsy photos. In the pictures, Jenkins found the first new clue, hair in Chris's clenched hand. And it took us four years to get that wad of hair tested for DNA. It took us four years. When a test was finally done, it showed the hair in Chris's hand was his own. It sounds strange, but the detectives say it makes sense and points to murder. As the killers were forcing Chris Jenkins' head underwater, the detectives believe he was in the fight for his life, and he was pulling out his own hair while he tried to get the killer's hands off his head. You get a picture of the Federal Reserve. Retired New York Police Sergeant Kevin Gannon says the Minneapolis police theory that Jenkins was thrown over a bridge doesn't fit the evidence. His head was turned 90 degrees to the right, which only would have occurred if he had died on land. He might have been drowned, but he had to die on land. Gannon and his former police partner, Anthony Duarte, say there's more. The flimsy shirt of Chris's Halloween costume was still tucked in, his shoes still on his feet. Both are signs, according to Gannon and Duarte, that Chris didn't plunge into the water from a bridge, but someone slid his body into the water. Definitely more than one person we could pin it on. Do you think if this thing would go to court that you could get someone convicted? Yes. And that's exactly what they hoped for when they met with Minneapolis police. We did make a mistake. Even though Jenkins' death is now classified as a homicide, no one's been arrested. But Gannon and Duarte say the department wasn't interested in hearing their evidence. This was our one shot. We went to Minneapolis police and they said they're not going to do anything with it because the prosecutor's office is not entertaining any more uh, evidence in the case. The detectives call Minneapolis's lack of interest disappointing. Stephen Jan Jenkins consider it a slap in the face. This is outrageous. Every value that we hold to be true and dear to our hearts, honesty, fairness, the gift of life itself, has been violated. Minneapolis Police Chief Tim Dolan was going to talk about the Jenkins case, but an hour before our interview, he canceled. A spokesperson told me police are not pursuing any of the Gannon or Duarte's information because the case needs, quote, new evidence, not new theories. Christy, as you've been doing this investigation, it's getting a lot of attention all around the country. A lot even. of feedback, a lot of feedback, emails, phone calls, people wondering about cases similar to that of Chris Jenkins. We've been hearing about it from people all over the country. The most strikingly similar one is a, a boy in upstate New York who's actually buried today. It's a very recent case. In fact, the college student's family, his father, is saying exactly what the Jenkins have been saying, that it was, wasn't just an accident. They believe foul plays involved. NYPD detectives believe it could be related. It's, he seems to fit the profile of the 40 other deaths right now classified as an undetermined drowning. We know, though, that these detectives have told me that they're going to look into this one. Sure, it's not over yet. We also know you're going to continue to work through the weekend on this story. Yes, we're going to New York, and we will have the first detective's first uh, national interview Monday morning on Good Morning America. We'll be there as well. All right. In the meantime, there's a lot to.